chatted with the mic you got. I didn't have to reach you. Mm-hmm. Three. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to be in the shot. <laughs> Three, two, one. Big Boy's Big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. It is a pleasure yeah. to have this lady back in the neighborhood, man. Assemblywoman, Wendy yes. Cadillo in yeah. the neighborhood. Wendy Cadillo, welcome back to the neighborhood. It's good to be back. It's babe. a pleasure to see you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. We've known each other for years, man. And, and we were just talking off air about how I'm kind of responsible for your whole political journey. <laughs> of course. You know, right. just, you, Vic. Yeah, man. And you used to do, like, political correspondence for the show. Mm-hmm. You added a... Made us very valid, Wendy. Yeah. You know, because no, it'd be issues or something that's going on, and I'll go, Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, yeah, and then it'd be like, oh, I heard it on Big Boy, and I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> you didn't hear it from Big Boy. You probably heard it. But it was in the neighborhood. Yeah, it and definitely was. And, and now, man, we see that you, of course, you move on, and you're doing great work for the community. And the one thing I can say about you, Wendy, is that you've never felt like a so-called politician to me. Because you really cared about the areas that you grew up in. Mm-hmm. And you cared about, really care about the areas that you represent. And where, where did you grow up, Wendy? I grew up in Boyle Heights. Boyle Heights. Boyle Heights, East Tally. I went to Roosevelt High School. Is where I'm rocking my Hello. Rough Riders. Rough Riders! <laughs> Los Angeles Council District 14. Yes. What is that? Well, it's local, yeah. right? It's about your everyday living experiences. It's it's what makes our communities thrive. It's at the local level. It's city council. It's the big white building in downtown LA. Mm-hmm. And it's where decisions are being made about our quality of life every single day. And when Housing, you say yes. homelessness, mental health care, encampments, public safety. You think about kids crossing through encampments trying to get yeah, to school. Man. Yeah. Something has to be done. What do we do about that, though? Because I've had that conversation where, you know, I never, we didn't have a car growing up. So it was either you walked to school, you rode a bike, whatever. And there's literally places that I went to school where I would walk down certain boulevards. And now you can't walk. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what happens? So it, is that on the local level, some of the things that either we miss or we, we don't kind of exercise our voices in? And not just on encampments. I mean, right. everything that, that's around us. Right. Big, I know your story. Mm-hmm. Like, you've talked about it. You wrote a book about it. Yes, ma'am. We all know, like, what it's like to come from nothing and be poor and just be just struggling every single day just trying to live your life. Right. Funding for all of the resources comes from the federal level, it comes from the state level, and then your your city taxes are supposed to be able to pay for resources for the most vulnerable. Mm-hmm. But what we're seeing is just that people are just falling into poverty even more and more yeah, so man. every day. Yes. So our local elected leaders are responsible in figuring out how do we help people. The fact that, look, I'll be honest, I'm 43 years old. Mm-hmm. For as long as I could remember, Skid Row has been what it is. Yeah. I don't want to live another 40 years and not be a part of the solution to get people out of tents and into treatment and into housing. Right, like we have, society has normalized the fact that we are stepping over people who are Mm -hmm. dying on the streets. I'm not okay with that. And Los Angeles is the biggest city in the state of California, largest in the country. Why do we have this humanitarian crisis right in our backyard? And it appears to like it's getting it's getting so called worse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's getting so called worse, and people think that when it comes to you know being unhoused, homeless, that Oh, they're on drugs. They made us like when we were homeless, it wasn't bad decisions. My mom wasn't on drugs. It was seven kids and you get caught in this slippery slope. Mm -hmm. And that slippery slope exists, Wendy. It it exists now even more so Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. they say, oh, you know, everyone could be three paychecks away from being homeless. Some are one paycheck Mm -hmm. away from being homeless or Mm -hmm. you got to have multiple incomes in a household Mm -hmm. now. Right. Just, just to, just to stay, not even afloat, to barely get by, to tread water. The definition of being homeless, literally on the federal level, means if you are living in someone's couch, like you're, you're right. sleeping in someone's right. living room because you don't have a home, you're already homeless. Mm. You don't need to be destitute and on the streets or living in your car. The definition of being homeless is not having a place for yourself and for your family, and more and more families are falling into that. Why do you feel like, and especially when people think of voting, Wendy? they think more of, oh, it's the presidential vote. Mm -hmm. And then we wake up and we have either these laws in our state that we're like, wait, what the hell happened here? You know, local laws, you know, Mm -hmm. that that either affect us or we don't pay attention to. How important is it to have the local vote? Oh, it's the most important. I mean, every election is important, right? right? But 
with the media and we tend to talk about the presidential election or your member of Congress, they work in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Who takes care of your every day, like right. your day-to-day lives? It's your local council member. It's your school board member. It's the mayor. Right. Right. It's local. And so right now I can tell you there's only about 5% of people that have voted right now. And you can vote early. You can vote by mail. We pass laws. I voted on laws and wrote laws that allow for you to just simply vote by mail. You don't even need a postage. It's all paid for. Right. And yet people are like, eh, I'm not going to do it. It doesn't impact me. But it does. Yeah. It's We've a, talked about, right? Oh, yeah. Like, if you're not voting, you're allowing somebody else to make a yeah. decision for you. Make the vote for you. Mm-hmm. And and it's wild what we do with our time. Like, we're, I'm not going to go down there. Or, or, or the line's long, but we could, you know, we could be on social media five hours a day. Mm-hmm. You know, Scrolling. like, yeah, the thing, the things that we could do with our time, then we wake up and we'll see, okay, maybe my axe was broken because of this pothole. You know, mm-hmm. maybe there's something that's going on in my community that I missed and someone else voted on, it. Mm-hmm. you know, and we see that e- even in California as a state, we're starting to see certain things that like January one, I'll look at laws and I'm like, damn, did this get past me? Yeah, but it's it's yeah. all right there, and it's not like it's a Houdini thing, and it's not like it's the three car Monty or somebody hiding a ball, you know, mm-hmm. under under a cup. It's it's right there for us. It's transparent. It's in front of us, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I try. I've been in office now for seven years, and I'm leaving the assembly. Thank you, and coming back home, and I want to bring back everything that I've learned in Sacramento, our state capital, and apply it locally to our local communities and be a partner. Oh, so Mayor you're Bass. really coming back. You're mm-hmm. not just gonna be. Up in Sacramento looking out for us. So locally, boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. City council. It's it's our local communities on the east side. And I'm proud. I'm proud to be from the east side and represent already 75% of the council district in my assembly overlap. I'm talking about Boyle Heights, Lincoln Heights, El Sereno, Highland Park, Eagle Rock, mm-hmm. uh, downtown LA, and really most importantly, Skid Row. Right. People make decisions about their community. But there's a whole community of people on Skid Row that need more resources and need more support. And we have to remember, like, it's not just about where I currently live. It's about how my vote impacts everyone that doesn't have the same opportunities that I do. Why is it important for you to either come back or really be boots on the ground? Big. It's, As opposed is, to just being a politician and just having a, a title. Right. I didn't run for office because I wanted to be an elected official. I ran because I wanted to make a difference. Right. Mm-hmm. This is my neighborhood. This is where I grew up. This is where I have roots. This is where my family is from. I proudly rock my Rough Riders like sweater from my high school because my the folks that I the students that I went to high school with, my friends are now teachers at Roosevelt High School. Mm-hmm. Right? It's about community. It's about what we do, what we can do together. Uh, and I, you know, what's what's better than than actually being and having a life of service? Right. And especially you you're talking about districts and areas that you can get around with without using your navigation. Cause you, right. you know what I'm saying? Because that's home turf. Right. Yeah, yeah. man. And sometimes, man, yeah. we'll say, oh, man, you know, no one's sitting at the table for us. We need someone at the table for us. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean, that's on any scale. People look at the NFL halftime show and say, oh, Usher, Rihanna, Dr. Dre. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Jay-Z is at the table. Mm-hmm. And he got flack for being at the table early on. We need people at the table, and then from if we're at that table, yeah, we build our own tables. Mm-hmm. But right now, we definitely need representation because if not, we don't have the voice. Right. If we don't have somebody in there saying, "Hey, what about?" or mm-hmm. somebody that's raising their hand, then we, we, we no one to speak for us. Right. And who you bringing to the cookout? Yeah, exactly. Right? Like you got a t- you got a seat at the table. Who you bringing with you? Yeah, man. How are you gonna advocate? How are you gonna move forward? How are you gonna bring the voices of community that have maybe felt disenfranchised or have maybe felt like those people don't represent me. Like, right. you know, how do you bring people with you to that building and city hall and say, like, my voice matters. Like, this is important and this is why I'm here. We've been hearing the loud outburst of politics. Don't trust politics. You know, don't, uh, it, everything is a dog fight. We're starting to see politicians that, you know, oh, well, I, that that's my guy. That's my girl. And it's like, it's some of the worst people I feel like are in positions, hmm. you know, but when it comes to to politics, why is it like how do you feel about that whole just just the definition of what it is now and how it's become a mockery? 
Uh, there is a big difference between being a politician mm-hmm. and being a public servant. Gotcha. And so you are? I'm a public servant. Gotcha. Like everything that I've done and what I do and how I work hard uh, and the sacrifices that come with that position is very different than the self-interest of a politician, mm. which is why I'm even running to begin with. I love my job in the assembly, but you know, our current council member uh, got caught up in some uh, leaked audio recordings right. where even the president... And that's been, Kevin DeLeon. That's right. And you say, the pre- that, yeah, Biden asked him to step down. The president of the United States asked him to step down, and he's moving forward and running for re-election, and this is my community. Mm. And at some point, you know, you just got to step up. You hear a, a call of service, and you're saying, if not now, when? If not me, who? Then let's go. Hey, man, when I saw the Kevin DeLeon thing, I was like, oh, this... This is it, especially in, in our communities. I just felt like it was unacceptable. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we've seen, you know, we've seen the, the, the outcries. And it seemed like if you could just ride through it, you know, and like, and, and I'm pretty sure with, with Kevin DeLeon, he's done some great things. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or I would hope so. But I felt like, man, like, bro, we, we sitting here talking about people in the community. And if that's what's going down, behind closed doors that couldn't have been the first time either out of your mouth or just in agreeance just being in the room is is a lot who you are behind closed doors when no one's watching when no one's listening is mm-hmm. who you are right right and and my thing is like kev can come on whatever it is so i'm not here to put somebody down to bring somebody up i just knew that i wanted to have you in because as far as what we call p1s and what we call communities even just with our radio family these are communities that have been that I've been in my entire life. Right. I'm here. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? My listeners are here. This is where this is where we shop. This is where we eat. This is what we sound like. And you got to have full representation there, because if not, we'll continue to be overlooked. Right. You know, yeah. I feel the same way as you do. It's like you, I'm not running a negative campaign against anybody. Right, right. I know that voters and people look, we just lived through COVID three years of COVID. People died. Like, there's a real sense of, of how do we recover? How do we move forward? How do we rebuild? Uh, and people want to hear about what you're going to do for them, not because you're tearing somebody down, but what? how are you going to improve my life and the life of my family? Yeah. Let's talk about some of these wins that you've had as, as well. Let's do you it. Know? Yeah. So, uh, so, was able to secure $50 million of the state budget for re- to rehab the old... Um, General, General Hospital. Hospital. General Hospital is in Boyle oh, yeah. Heights. It's that beautiful old yeah. building, right? Mm-hmm. Iconic. It's empty. And so when we talk about, like, how do we support our unhoused residents, people that have been chronically homeless and living on the street, people with severe mental health challenges, there's nowhere to put them. There's mm-hmm. nowhere to offer support for them. 24-hour wraparound services. We're creating the beds that Los Angeles needs to be able to take people mm-hmm. off the streets, mm-hmm. out of tents, and into treatment going to be huge for los angeles city of la 54 million dollars right there man for the city of los angeles youth job corps young people need jobs yeah right yeah, high man. school college age so we created a program 54 million dollars for the city of los angeles that i fought for in the budget to bring it home and, and that's create... you up there in yeah. sacramento this is me making sacramento. sure that we're taking care of home yep. plate me in sacramento at the table negotiating for the biggest city because if you that's weren't my job. at the table I wasn't at the table, we wouldn't have gotten those fifty million for General Hospital, those fifty four million for jobs for our community, fifteen million dollars in, in workforce development for our organization, yeah, Homeboy, Homeboy Industries. Homeboy Industries, what up? He, right? Sorry, Father. You know <laughs> Father, when G. I, Father Greg, when I rolled him out the neighborhood. <laughs> when, uh, yeah. That's my guy and fifty million for uh after school pr- programs. After school as well. programs, right? Like Yeah, working... I grew up in after school programs. Me too. Yeah. Me too. So lived experiences, right? Like I know what it's like to be the eldest of five daughters, have four younger sisters, the importance that after school played in my life and in my sister's life because my parents were working, Mm -hmm. right? And if if those programs weren't around, what would happen? Yeah, and and now it seems like now the the phone has become the program. You know, social Mm -hmm. media has become the program, you know, and we need something to go to, you know, I think after school programs, not not oh, it saved my life, but it's it really saved me from a lot of idle time. Mm-hmm. And and like friends too, like buddies, you know, like hey man, let's hang out. And if you don't have a place to hang out, you are gonna find a place to mm-hmm. hang out. And sometimes yeah. maybe with the wrong people, right? Yeah. Get on the wrong sometimes. crowd, 
Yeah, it happens. What so. do we do? And I don't know if this is more on the on the California, the bigger level, but even with, with what we feel locally on, like the the smash and grabs, oh, the catch yeah. and release. You know, I mean, I remember D.L. Hughley years ago. D.L. Hughley had a job that said, man, somebody could steal your car and be out of jail before you get a new one. And now that's even more so because you'll go places now and you could boldly just walk out. Yeah, you know, my first job when I was 16 was at the Sears building in Royal Heights. It's <laughs> yeah. now another empty building. There are stores that are closing down every single day mm -hmm. because they don't want to deal with the smash and grabs. Right. And what does that mean ultimately? That's a lot of jobs for people in our community, right? When a store closes down or a small business gets broken in, mm -hmm. you're taking away from the livelihood of those families right. and you're taking away jobs in our community. Yeah. None of it is okay. And that also, public safety is a big part of like the local level. How do we support our small businesses to make sure that that's not happening? When, you, when you're in Sacramento, and I know that you've done some great things for us here at Home Plate. But did you even feel a detachment like, man, I'm not right there, right there. I'm fighting for us, but I'm not right there, right there. Well, I have great people on my team right. here in L.A. that represent me each and every single right. day. When I'm fighting in Sacramento, they're here locally fighting the good fight right here at home. I heard that. So we have a team. As, and, and as you should. Yeah. And, and my name is this big boy's neighborhood, but oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on the marquee, but the people that really do the rumor, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you'll see a movie, and it's like, oh, starring, you know, put any name here. But then when the movie go off, you see a thousand names. Right. Those are the stars. Right. Though, you know what I'm saying? You're only as good as your team. Yeah, yeah. Remember y'all said that, so please tighten up. <laughs> please, please tighten up. Hey, Wendy, and I do got to ask you this. There's so much when it comes to to politics, politics, and then there's a human, er human like, guides that we go by. You were recently, and I don't even know how recent this was, but you got pulled over. Was it DUI? Yeah. Driving under the influence. Yes, yes. What happened there? Oh, big. It was perhaps the most traumatic moment of my entire life. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I've been working 14-hour days just pushing and stressing and grinding, and I went to an event. I had two drinks, mm -hmm. but I hadn't eaten, and I was tired. And I drove home and I made a decision and I shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. And I woke up to an accident that could have nearly ended my life. And I'm just grateful to God every day that no one was hurt and that I'm alive. Mm -hmm. And the accident was in November and I'm 120 plus days sober. Congratulations. Thank you. Have you had a, a, a drinking problem or was that just something that that night yeah. you... You no. had something to drink. You know, you never, you don't notice your habits until they happen, mm -hmm. right? But I remember even when we worked together at the station, right? You go to clubs and you're popping bottles and you're celebrating and you're doing all the things and, you know, it catches up to you. And at some point, two drinks without eating. Right. And you don't recognize and you don't realize just how much you're hurting yourself. Like, that was my reality. And the fact is, like, negotiating in politics, and I've talked about this before, it's, you're in rooms mostly with men. I was often the only woman, and you feel like you gotta compete and you gotta be a part of the, the room. And there's always drinks involved, right? Mm -hmm. And so even if you have one drink, two drinks a night every night for the past seven years, which has been my reality, your body gets used to it. Wow. And so when I started seeing a doctor, and I'll be honest about this because I think it's important that we talk about it. When I got into my accident and I started going to therapy, I enrolled in my own my own like substance abuse. Uh, program at, uh, with my doctor and at some I was like I almost died right I could have hurt someone I could have ended my own life because of poor decisions mm -hmm. so I took it very seriously and I started going to therapy and talking to folks and you know trying to understand what substance abuse was and what alcoholism looks like went to AA meetings and I heard these stories that were like those are the stories that I'm living through right now, too. And then this happened, and that's when I knew, like, man, we, I don't even know how to talk about it because I stopped drinking, mm -hmm. and then I started getting the shakes. Oh, wow. And I talked to my doctor, and I said, look, I, ha I have anxiety. Look, I can't, like, and she's like, you may have anxiety, and you may also have depression, and you're going through all your trauma and mental health challenges, but what you're going through right now is withdrawals. Mm. And I thought, no way. So denial is mm -hmm. a big part of it. 
right? No, me? How could I be going through withdrawals? But I was because I had accustomed my body to have at least one drink every night for the past seven years that I've been in office. Mm -hmm. And so cold turkey, that's not the kind of life I want. And alcohol clearly does not serve me. It is not helpful to my life. And it's not helpful to my goal of helping people. And that's it. What did you learn? I learned that how we manage and how I have been managing my stress, my, you know, just all of the things that I work with and around, uh, I wasn't managing my Mm self-care in a way that truly mattered. And I was not taking care of myself. That That was was the lesson lesson number one. Lesson, the biggest lesson after that was just denial. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that, you know, Substance abuse on any issue can look a different way for different people, but all of our bodies have different reactions to different things. And I learned that I I don't want alcohol in my life. And I've learned that in AA, you learn it's one day at a time. I've also learned that with talking with friends, it's a hard conversation to have because the immediate question is like, well, you're gonna have a glass of wine again, right? And it's like, I literally am telling you that I'm in sobriety that I'm trying to like change my life. Why would you ask me if I want to do the very thing that caused me to almost end my life? Mm -hmm. And it's a flip of a conversation. And I think, you know, it's a learning curve and how we try to talk about it with friends and loved ones. And the reality is in Latino communities and in other communities, like alcohol is such a big part of our culture and celebrations Mm -hmm. and, you know, like you pour a tequila shot at a quinceanera when somebody's turning 15, like it's right. it's a thing, right? And then it catches up to you. Was that your first time drinking and driving or was that your first time drinking and driving and getting caught? That was my, that was my first time that I was ever in a situation like that. Gotcha. Even when I, you know, I'm, I'm not of the Uber generation. I'm of the, right. of the designated driver designation, which is what I always was. I was always like the designated driver. And that night, I thought that I was okay. Mm-hmm. And my friends thought that I was okay because I wasn't alone. Oh, and it, wow. you know, it turns out that I wasn't okay. Right. So it was another conversation of like, how do we take care of each other? Mm. So what's, what's the big picture? Because with, with, with sometimes when you look at, you know, when we're coming up in, in politics, it's the smear campaigns and it's this and it's that, and people try to take, take you off or knock you off your square for the beautiful things that you've done for real people and for real reasons and for real districts and creating funds that would have never gotten to our communities if it wasn't a Wendy Carrillo sitting there for us. Mm. So what's the what's the big picture for Wendy Carrillo that super serves the community and us? I am human. Mm-hmm. You know, I made a mistake and this moment in my life does not define right. who I am. Uh, it's all of the work that we do to move forward. Um, I think we all get to learn. We all get to move forward. We all get to live our best lives. Uh, And most importantly, like we get to live in dignity as Mm -hmm. well. And let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Maybe no stones cast. Right? No stones cast. And when I say what's the big (laughs) picture, I mean even just politically or public service. You know, what do you want to see for us? I want to be able to be proud of the city that we live in. Mm -hmm. I want to be able for all of us to be able to roll up our sleeves, get our work done, help people, no longer live in a society that steps over a human being who's living in destitute on the street. I want kids to feel safe. I want families to be able to live in dignity in their communities. I want our city to be able to have the resources that it needs to support the best city in the world. You can go anywhere in Los Angeles, but Los Angeles is only as good as the people that live in it, Mm -hmm. right? And so when we have people moving out because they can't afford to live here, they can't afford the rent, they can't afford to buy a home, they can't afford to like send their kids to college, they can't even afford to go to the doctor because they can't afford the medical expenses. How are we the fifth largest economy in the world as a state, and yet people are falling into Mm -hmm. poverty every single day? That's about who we have in power who's making decisions and who's in the room, right? I wanna be a part of the solution. I feel like I've been a part of the solution and delivering results for our communities and all of our families. Now I wanna do that in a different way. And I think, you know, for folks that are listening or watching, it's 
your vote is going to make a difference in how we run our city and what happens next, the kind of legacy you want to live, live your kids. And right? election date once again? March 5th is the last day to vote, Tuesday. Yeah, Voting centers have already opened. Everybody got their vote by mail ballot. Mm-hmm. You just got to fill it out and send it in. And are we going a little early this time? or? We're going early. It's the first time that California is going early in a presidential election because... California wants to be a bigger player and, you know, figure out a way to not ensure that you know who gets into office again. Boy, no. He that we do not speak his name. Right, right, <laughs> right. Roller. And are you bringing out your own shoe line? Or are you, you know, bring out shoe line? I'd have to work with you on that, <laughs> the, the babe. The you know what I'm saying? You're just <laughs> like chancla, Yeah, 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 yeah. there you go. The, yeah. the wasabi, uh, the windy wasabi, easy to be all green shoe. Hey, we, we, we'll figure it out. No, it no out. need to have a brainstorm in here. But thank you for coming into the neighborhood, yeah. man. Assemblywoman yeah. Wendy yeah. Carrillo in the neighborhood. And, and thank you for being extremely transparent. And not a politician or a public servant, but thank you for being a human being. Thank you, baby. You, and, you, and you know I love you. You know what I'm saying? Big boy in the morning. Wendy Carrillo in the neighborhood. <laughs> Assemblywoman Wendy Carrillo up in here. Big boy's Big neighborhood. Boy.